This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to another edition of the Financial Beat with uh, Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Brigary Financial. Uh, wherever you are today in Southern California, thank you so much for deciding to spend a little time with us. We're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement, and that, of course, is Logan Sadler's specialty. Uh, I'm Ron Stutz. I always enjoy my time spent with Logan. I think you will, too. Logan, how you doing? Well, Ron, I'm doing great this week and uh, really looking forward to a great show here. Yeah, we have a lot of important stuff to talk about today and uh, some rather amusing stuff as well. But let me give out that financial beat number so folks can arrange to have a discovery meeting with you. 888-823-PLAN. I would suggest that you go ahead and write down that number right now before you forget and then call either during the show or after the show and arrange to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. Leave a message with your name and your phone number, you'll get a call back first part of the week, and then you can sit down and have a conversation with Logan uh, on the phone or perhaps a, a Zoom meeting or maybe even one of the offices, uh, Hemet or Redlands, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember it is by using the word plan, which is so important, 888-823-PLAN plan. Hey, in the news recently, there's been a lot of talk about Social Security, and we've talked about Social Security on and on and on on this show. And uh, Mm -hmm. what's happening on the Social Security front right now, Logan? Yeah, you're right. I think we talked about it. I can't remember now. I think it was a few weeks ago we were talking about the projections that were coming out uh, as far as Social Security uh, receivers getting that pretty big raise there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they finally came out with the final numbers, and it looks like Social Security confirmed I want to say it was back in October on October 13th, and they were saying now it's going to be 8.7% uh, starting uh, in January of this coming year. So pretty uh, pretty awesome for a lot of you guys out there that are retired and receiving Social Security. It'll be a pretty good pay raise. I think the projections were showing for most Social Security re- recipients, it'll be around $140 per month. So mm-hmm. it is a, a good little chunk of change thrown in there. I know some people were saying, well, inflation's gone up more than that. We should have got more. It's like, well, you know, probably, but hey, something's better than nothing in some cases. So it is uh, nice to see that go up. And again, I know we talked about it last time and, and last year when this happened as well, but one of the biggest races that's happened in a very long time, uh, decades really, and the, of course, second to, or it's the first one, and last year's was the second bi- biggest race. So we've had two consecutive pretty big bumps in Social Security. Of course, it all comes back around to what's going on out there in the economy as far as the you know the big inflationary period we're currently going through. So, uh, you know, it's just nice to have something to give some of us uh, uh, that are out there on a fixed income listen to the show uh, some good information because hey, who doesn't like a little a little increase in rate in wages? Let alone you know eight point seven percent is pretty is uh, pretty decent. So that's some good news there. Yeah, that is a pretty decent bump and uh, really good news for a lot of folks. Hey, let's talk about uh, the uh, Karate Kid uh, mentor, Mr. Miyagi. You remember him? I do, yeah. Who doesn't Who doesn't remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to picture you during this entire conversation standing on one foot on a tree stump and uh, wearing a, a karate suit, okay? Uh, yeah. however, <laughs> however you guys got to envision it, you do it. <laughs> well, I'm just learning what we might be able to... I'm wondering what we can learn about retirement planning from the legendary Mr. Miyagi. And here's one thing he said, and, and I'll leave it up to you to interpret this in a financial sense. Walk on road. Walk left side, safe. Walk right side, safe. Walk middle, sooner or later, get squished just like grape. Logan, I don't want to say that happened to you, but what in the world is he talking about? Yeah, okay, so if I had to twist this into something related to financials, I would say kind of, you know, there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way to be successful or navigate a particular area of your financial life. It's It really could be possible that there's a multitude of different investment approaches that probably could work with you, but let's be honest, as I talk about on the show all the time, you know, most of those approaches, they need consistency and time, and they require you to probably stick to a plan. People tend to, especially in financials, people tend to, um, you know, 
kind of uh, dabble here, dabble there, make some adjustments quite frequently. And they really, what most investors or what most retirement plans lack is consistency, right? A lot of people are jumping back and forth between different uh, advisors, maybe, or different strategies, or even just different approaches. And I always tell people, you know, when you're looking at all of the investment tools out there, which we talk about pretty much all of them, I would say, on this show, you know, between real estate, annuities, stocks, bonds, and, you know, all of these different types of asset classes that are out there, they all require pretty much the same type of approach where a lot of it is consistency and time and being committed to that to that approach or that strategy, you know, and, and understanding risk and all that, of course. But, you know, nothing is just kind of a, a one size fits all catching lightning in a bottle, right? A lot of it is basically uh, most of this stuff out there as far as retirement approaches or different investment tools or strategies, a lot of them require time uh, and consistency to really to see uh, those really work for their benefit. Yeah. Well, here's another quote from Mr. Miyagi, and this one's kind of easy to understand, I think. And we've said this ourselves in, in so many words, trust quality of what you know, not quantity. Uh, can you interpret that for us, Logan? Yeah, I mean, that's basically like you said, Ron. I mean, you don't really need to know every single thing about the financial industry or the economy to be a successful investor. I've met people several times where, you know, they don't know, they don't track the GDP numbers monthly or they don't look at every price to earning share on every stock or mutual fund they buy. You know, they don't, they don't have a lot of those parameters in there, but they have a few basic principles that they go along with and they're very consistent with where they do that. And they uh, know what they want and they know what their goals are. I always tell people when we're looking at investments. Obviously, yeah, you know, I, I tend to probably know more than, than the average person about investments only because I do this type of stuff every day, right? Yeah. Those are the conversations I'm having uh, with myself on the way home in the car. So, I mean, yeah. I uh, am very up to date on all of that stuff. But a lot of people out there, what I always tell people, if you want to really simplify something and what I try to do with our clients when, you know, you're calling in from the radio show or coming in after one of our events and they're saying, you know, what, how do you categorize investments or what's your philosophy or what's this? You know, I always tell people, the most important thing is you want to simplify stuff. You know, being simplified is to me is very important because you want to understand what it is you're doing. And I always say most investments really have a few different qualities and what you want to be looking for. You want to know what the risk of that investment is, what the liquidity of that investment is. If you had to get money out or, or whatnot, what would the time frame be? Is there any guarantees on that investment? You know, is it a is it a money market, a CD? Is it an annuity? Does it have any type of guarantees? Is it diversified? And how is it taxed? Right? Those are typically kind of those questions you want to a ask, and then you can kind of decide on how it fits into your plan and all that stuff. But you really want to make sure that you don't have to know every single thing about the whole world of the whole economy. Uh, obviously, the more you know, probably the better off you are. But just kind of understanding the basic principles of what types of investments you have or what types of investments you're using to kind of build out your retirement approach, I think, is really the, the better way to go about that. Well, I'm glad to hear that you have conversations with yourself. Uh, I talk to myself, too. <laughs> I, I talk to myself all the time. I don't know what it is. It's funny because obviously talking with people all day here at the office or on the phone or on Zoom, and I get in the car and I'm like, ah, you know, I end up talking to myself sometimes. So, yeah, yeah I'm not, not alone. I'm probably not alone on that. But. Hearing hearing voices in your head in a, in a different way, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. That's okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Here, here's another Mr. Miyagi quote here. Uh, he, he is the legendary mentor for. Uh, uh, the Karate Kid uh, whole franchise there. But uh, first learn stand, then learn fly. Nature rule, Daniel son, not mine. <laughs> what does that yeah. mean? <laughs> I think what he means is like you got to, you know, you got to learn to walk before you run type thing, right? Uh, and I think what he means by that is basically when you look at life, nothing really worth attaining is done overnight. You know, most of this stuff is especially true when you look at investment success. As we talk about all the time, I have a lot of these, uh, as radio listeners know, most of the people I'm dealing with that are coming in our firm are typically approaching retirement. You know, they're 50 years old, 60 years old, or maybe 70 years old. And uh, most of the time when I end up meeting with their kids, they'll send their kids our way. And it's funny because they'll ask, you know, hey, what does is, what is some of your more, more wealthy clients have in common? Or what would be your best investment advice? And a lot of that is really picking a strategy and making sure that you're comfortable with it and being consistent over a long period of time. You know, a lot of it's not done overnight. 
Um, it, really, that slow and steady approach is still one of the best ways to do it. And trying to get rich quick in an investment typically is not uh, going to work out, right? A lot of the times, more often than not, a lot more often than not, uh, that ends in failure or, or you know ends very badly. So I think when you're looking, almost you know any American who has built a substantial sum of money for retirement has done so with a broad array of different investments lo- over a long term period. Not by necessarily being a genius. I remember I had one client where, you know, he was saying he actually didn't even graduate high school and got into a trade and started his own business. And he ended up putting away money and just kind of doing things by himself and got with an advisor at a period of time and put some money away and, you know, really didn't understand a whole lot about investments or world of the world as far as the economy goes and stuff. And it was funny, Ron. I remember him saying he ended up coming on board with our firm for retirement and he was able to retire and have a very successful retirement. And it was pretty funny because I remember he said, look at me, some kid who barely didn't even graduate high school and uh, ended up with, you know, over a million dollars saved for retirement and able to retire to for the retirement of, my, of his dreams, you know, and a lot of that was done, like he was saying, is not that he knew what to do all the time, or not that he did all the right things, but being you know consistent and understanding that hey, this is over the long term. I'm not looking to do any you know any tricks to get rich quick, and really looking at the long term approach of his goals is, is how most people do it. Boy, good for that guy. I mean, uh, that's a yeah, great it was story. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Here's one that uh, is so true. I mean, you've heard a variation of this, uh, you know, in life, you know, for years and years, your whole life, probably. Sometimes what heart know, head forget. That's the way Mr. Miyagi put it. But Logan, how would you put it? And what does that mean? Yeah, when I think of that, I think of it, you know, it's okay to put a little bit of your heart into your financial decisions, right? I mean, let's be honest. Um, I always tell people most financial decisions, believe it or not, very few of them are made off of facts, right? Most of them are made off of uh, of uh, emotions and, and from the heart, and good or bad in some cases. And I think um, that doesn't necessarily mean you should make all of your decisions based off emotions, but you definitely want to have to m- make some financial decisions and do some research and make sure that, you know, the fundamentals of that recommendation or of that plan makes sense. But it is okay to use some human emotion when you're looking at your investments, because I always tell people the the type of people that we work with, like I was saying earlier, are typically, you know, in retirement or starting retirement or approaching it. And I always tell people, it is a very, very sensitive time, right? You're getting to a place where you might be getting older, you might have some health issues, you might have, maybe you're just losing your parents, or maybe they're going into a nursing home. Uh, maybe you're not, you know, maybe your health isn't as great as it once was. And so there's just so many different things going on, and as well as people forget retiring is still an emotional decision, right? It, yes, obviously it's physical for some people, but a lot of the times it's emotional saying, man, I don't want to do this anymore, or I don't think I could do this any longer, uh, or I got to get out of here pretty quick, right, over the next few years. So (laughs) it's one of those things where there's a lot of emotion surrounding that. And that's why I always tell people that's part of what my job is with our clients is to kind of help sort through that and make sure we're making the best decisions from a financial standpoint that also makes sense from an emotional standpoint. And I think those two if done correctly, is typically where you kind of find that happy medium. But yeah, you don't want to be making all of your decisions based off emotion or necessarily all of them just based off, you know, numbers and stuff. So you want to kind of find that happy medium. And uh, definitely, that's something we recommend, Ron, when you're, when you're looking at that. But I always tell people, hey, when you come in to meet with us for that discovery meeting, uh, like we talk about all the time on the radio show, don't expect me to be Mr. Miyagi, okay? I don't have uh, <laughs> that, those wise words, and you won't have any great quotes to leave with. But what you will leave with when you come in for that discovery meeting, and a lot of you radio listeners that have came in and came on board with us recently, you know, I mean, really what we're provide is some good, valuable education on the radio. And what that discovery meeting is intended for is for those of you that are kind of approaching retirement or getting into retirement and really starting to focus on how can I kind of put what I have to work and how can I really get a customized plan that fits what I am trying to do over the next few years and really making sure that I'm putting all my dollars to use to fit not only from a financial standpoint, but also from an emotional standpoint. I understand there's a lot going on in the world and uh, some of our portfolios, you know, there's a lot going on. So you really want to make sure that you're on track. And that's exactly what that discovery meeting is intended for, to really, for us to get an introduction to meet you, you to meet us, as well as to kind of just kind of start from ground zero and understand what is it you're trying to accomplish and really see if we can't provide any additional value to what you're currently receiving to help navigate you through uh, into retirement. If you'd like a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, the number to call to make it happen is 888-823-PLAN. 
That is 888-823-PLAN. Uh, Logan Sadler works with all three generations of some of the client families at Regary. Many clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. And you can get that discovery meeting with no cost, and there's no obligation involved at all. Whether you're in Rancho Cucamonga, Orange County, Loma Linda, wherever you are today, we appreciate your being with us. The number to call once again to arrange a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. Simply call, leave your name and phone number, you'll get a call back. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. He's the VP and Chief Investment Officer. We'll be back with more in just a moment. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. And Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal. And it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. And the beat goes on. The financial beat we're talking about here. The radio show with Logan Sadler of Regary Financial. Offices in Hemet and Redlands. If you'd like to have a conversation with Logan, call this number, 888-823-PLAN. If you haven't written down that number yet, go ahead and write it down right now. 888-823-PLAN. Put it in your phone, whatever you need to do. But, you know, the best thing to do is just go ahead and call it right now during the show while you're listening. And then you're not going to forget. Just leave a message with your name and phone number and you'll get a call back and then you can have a discovery meeting with logan it's not going to cost you anything and and not going to have any strings attached 888-823-PLAN one more time 888-823-PLAN not only is logan on the radio here every week but uh, there are podcasts available and logan has his own youtube channel uh, tell our listeners about those if you would logan yeah for those of you that you know like the like the uh, tempo of the show here and want to check it out further and catch some other episodes you can actually head over to podcast wherever you download those at uh, on whether that's spotify Amazon, Apple Music, and uh, type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And again, there's over 70 episodes up there for you to kind of check out at your convenience, covering tons and tons of different retirement education that I think you'll find valuable as well. As you can head over to the YouTube channel and type in The Financial Beat, for those of you that might like more of a video type of uh, you know concept, that's obviously what we do over there at the YouTube channel. So you could type in The Financial Beat on YouTube and you can check out, we have tons of videos that we upload on there weekly on on different types of retirement planning concepts, what to do during inflation, how to invest based off of risk tolerance, and a lot of great information on a lot of different types of investments and kind of different philosophies. So head over to those two areas and check those out on the the Financial Beat podcast or YouTube channel. You know, a lot of good music on YouTube as well. And, uh, you know, I find myself going into the rabbit hole, you know, watching music videos and stuff sometimes. It it gets me all the time. (laughs) I'm a a big music buff, and I know you love music as well. But I discovered something earlier this week that I did not know beforehand. Freddie Mercury and Paul McCartney used the same (laughs) piano to record Bohemian Rhapsody and Hey Jude. I I did not realize that until I read it. I had no idea either. And like you said, I know you're a big music guy as well as I am. Like you said, I, I had no idea. That's a fun, interesting fact there. I mean, that, uh, that piano has been through some classics. Yeah. I, I, wow. would as, I would assume, and I think most music fans probably would assume, that it was done on the piano at Abbey Road Studios. But that uh-huh. is not the case. I looked it wow. up. And uh, it was done on a piano at uh, Trident Studios really? in, in Soho. So, hey. There you go. 
That is interesting. Like you said, I, and it's funny you mentioned the YouTube rabbit hole because I swear all my friends even know when they come over. I put on YouTube music videos when people come over, you know, just as background noise. And, and I love it because stuff pops up on there. I'm like, oh, man, I had no idea, you know, different live performances of yeah. entertainers playing together and stuff. So, yeah, it, it gets, me, uh, gets me all the time on that, on that YouTube uh, rabbit hole there. Yeah, and if you go to YouTube and listen to music, go to YouTube and search for, uh, uh, you know, Logan Sadler as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> you might find him on there doing a music video. I don't know. But. Oh, man, I, my financial advice, way better than my music would ever be. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, there are some people out there who say they don't want to retire, and sometimes that's genuine. Sometimes they really don't want to retire, but some people use it as a as a statement to kind of say that, you know, maybe it's a defense mechanism uh, yeah. to compensate for the fact that they feel like they can't retire. So I thought today we could explore some of the possible meanings behind that statement, I don't want to retire. Yeah, You know, Logan, I'm sure that you've had people come in and uh, say to you, I don't want to retire because I love my career. And most of the time, I guess you can take that at face value, but some people may be using it to disguise you know, some inadequacies or insecurities about whether they're actually going to be able to do it. Yeah, you're, you're 100% right. It, it, most of the time, it's people that say, yeah, I love my career or I don't want to retire. One of those two things a lot of the times is they might not have put themselves in the best situation to be able to retire or to be able to retire how they envisioned, right? I mean, I think a lot of us can agree. I mean, retirement, I don't know about you, Ron, but when I envision retirement, I always tell people I envision going to the beach or traveling or, you know, at concerts or doing something, right? Playing a lot of golf or hanging out with friends or family. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the times what most people don't understand is a lot of that costs money, right? Sure. So a lot of the times what people envision retirement is it's spending money. And if you haven't done a great job of, of preparing yourself for that next phase, that next paycheck um, in retirement, you know, a lot of the times we could kind of use that as a defense mechanism that oh, I don't really want to retire. Um, I've seen it that way. Now, however, there is some type of different industries I've seen where, uh, I, for example, I have a client who actually came on board last year. She's a radio listener, so she'll she'll probably be listening to this. But yeah, it, it's awesome. Where she's seventy one years old and is a teacher, and you know she's put away enough money to be able to pretty much do whatever she kind of wants to in retirement, and definitely live out what she wants to do in retirement, her ideal lifestyle. And the nice part is, is she has a great pension, obviously, from being a teacher for all those years, but she also put away, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of around $700,000 or so that she could kind of use that to supplement with her pension. And if she wanted to, she could make more money retired right now than she would working. I mean, when you think about that, that is the dream, right? I love it. And what's funny is, guess what, Ron? She's going to work another year, yeah. right? She's probably going to work another two more years. She's yeah. one of those people where she enjoys it. She really loves it. That's great. She does. And so, you know, you see that a lot of the time, but I think the position you want to put yourself in is, I could retire if I, if I wanted to. That's where I would always say she's in that ideal spot. And I have several clients that do fall into this where you have enough money or you've put yourself in a situation with different pensions or social securities or you're, maybe you have no debt or whatever the situation is. You put yourself in a situation where based off your plan, you could retire if you wanted to. But the nice part is you don't have to work, right? That's a totally different, different mindset. You know, one more question I want to ask you here, and uh, this is kind of related to that one. It's uh, pretty much the same kind of situation. Uh, there are some folks who say, you know, when asked when they're going to retire, they say, maybe I could do it, but I'm just not confident enough in my portfolio, or I'm not confident enough uh, in my plan, or maybe even I'm not confident enough in my advisor to just mm -hmm. walk away from work now. What would you tell them? Yeah, that there, there's probably a good chance that this person – probably has enough money or close to it and probably could retire, but they just haven't seen what a comprehensive income plan that could look like and what type of confidence that can give you in your own nest egg. And really, in all fairness, it's really hard to be confident if you don't really understand, if you maybe just have a basket of products and a couple investments you that you've kind of been sold over the years or put money into over the years, and you have no idea how all those will kind of work in conjunction together uh, in retirement. I always say a lot of people, you want to make sure that you have confidence in your money and your retirement when you're heading into retirement. That's why I always 
always tell people one of the things you need, right, is you want a lot of people want peace of mind and they want confidence when it comes to retire. And a lot of the times that might be that you maybe don't have an advisor that specializes in retirement. So maybe they don't have the tools or services to kind of plug in what a real income plan might look like in retirement. And, uh, you know, that's really where we say it's a game changer. When we sit down with clients and show them, hey, you know, if next year, if you retired, here's what your income would look like and here's where it would come from. Uh, if you waited two more years or three more years, we're really able to kind of plug all that in and really give those clients that like I said, typically it's pretty eye opening. And I always feel like that's the biggest game changer for us when clients come in, uh, you know, and really the nice part about it is again, this radio show is all intended for just great education and general, you know, retirement education. But at that discovery meeting, after that discovery meeting, now we have a lot of your different assets, your goals, what you're trying to do with your retirement plan, what your biggest concerns are. And we can actually custom fit a retirement plan to fit those goals and needs. And inside that retirement plan, like I said, it covers what your fears are, what your goals are, what your long-term goals are, everything all in one. But most importantly, it has an income plan, a detailed income plan that shows you what your income could look like over the course of the next 20 or 30 years of your retirement, as well as where it would come from and how long it would last. And kind of shows you a bunch of different market variations and some really good projections that I think are very important to make sure that the clients are able to spend with confidence in retirement and enjoy that retirement. And so if you're one of those clients that's been listening to the show and uh, are interested in what a real income plan might look like in retirement, maybe your current advisor isn't providing that for you, or maybe you don't have an advisor and are looking to get a detailed income plan together and you're approaching retirement or maybe just started, I think it's time you make that phone call. If you're looking for a vision of what your retirement could look like, the number to call is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. You may be able to retire right now. And how would you feel if you worked another two years and found out that you could retire now? Get all the answers to your questions from Logan Sadler at Bregarie Financial. It all starts with a discovery meeting. And to arrange that, call 888-823-PLAN. That is for Bregarie Financial, serving you in Southern California, offices in Hemet and Redlands. And, of course, they have terrific partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and Medicare specialists. Everybody involved in your financial life to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. A discovery meeting, no cost, no obligation. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler, and there's more coming up in just a moment. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year with stimulus packages, infrastructure plans, and other programs. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes. Yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sadler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, Text advice to 21,000. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to the financial beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. Welcome back to more of the Financial Beat. This show is all about getting you to and through retirement and doing it in the most efficient way possible, efficient tax-wise and everything else. Logan Sadler can help you put together all the pieces of the puzzle. And it really is a big puzzle requiring a lot of strategy, a lot of thought, and a lot of information. And Logan Sadler is a veritable fountain of information when it comes to financial planning. He helps so many folks get uh, to and through retirement, works with three different generations of clients and could certainly help you. Uh, How would you like a discovery meeting? 
to discover things about him. He can discover things about you. You can have a conversation about your situation. It's not going to cost you anything at all and not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that. The number to call to make that happen is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler at Regary Financial, uh, serving you in Southern California and uh, really folks all over the country and all over the world count on Regary Financial. Uh, Logan Sadler would be happy to talk to you. You know, uh, Logan, I, I got a quote of the week here, and I apologize. I don't have any idea who said this, but I, I think it's actually kind of funny, and it's so true. What's my favorite childhood memory? Not paying bills. I can identify <laughs> with that, can't you? Yeah, right. A time a time when we thought it was stressful or there was a lot going on, but man, it was a lot more simple than we might have thought it was, right? Yeah. Uh, before we had a cell phone bill, a cable bill, Netflix, all these other, you know, all gas bill, all this other stuff that piles up, and uh, feels like every year you add a new bill on, no matter no matter how hard you try to budget or whatever else comes up, right? Yeah, there's always something to worry about when you're an adult and you have a family, and you know, uh, I found that the older I get, the smarter my parents were, you know. Yeah, that's a great. <laughs> That's a great point. It, it's funny, and uh, yeah, like I, I, I always say, I had a story about my grandpa. He used to always tell me, "What are you, what are you so stressed about?" When I was a kid and in high school and stuff, you know. And uh, I would always say, "Well, there's a lot going on. I got basketball practice. I got baseball practice. Or you got, you know." And he would always be like, "Trust me, this is the best time of your life. Just enjoy it." And you're like, "Yeah, sure, old man, sure," you know. And now you're like, "Man, he was, he was right. That was yeah. probably the most calm as, as things have ever been." Exactly, man. Love to go back and do it again. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about life insurance and uh, a okay. lot of people make mistakes when it comes to life insurance it's always yeah. bad when somebody dies unexpectedly without any life insurance at all and leaves the family yeah. in a difficult financial position but it might be even worse when somebody has life insurance that doesn't pay out because they made one of these mistakes that i'm going to mention here uh, number one on the list would be letting your policy lapse and that could be a really sad thing yeah, it really can. And I kind of want to say a few words on life insurance here, too, is one of the biggest planning tools I'd say that is probably either under most of the time underutilized is life insurance. And there's a lot of people out there that say life insurance is the one size fits all investment. I'm, I don't tend to think that way, but I do think it is one of those tools that definitely can be used for some people in a retirement plan for a couple different reasons. Um, but like there's a famous quote by this guy, Tom Hegna, he's pretty famous in the industry. Huh? And he always says the, uh, I might be butchering this, but it says the only type of life insurance that's, that's the right one is the one that is paid out and that's in force when it's needed, right? Uh -huh. And so I always tell people, like you were saying, Ron, letting your policy lapse, it's one of those things where you could have been paying on that dang thing for 20 years, right? And just a, pre, a brief little lapse there and not paying at the wrong time could leave your, you know, your family in a whole different situation than if we had made that premium on time. And there's a lot of different ways to go sometimes instead of just letting the policy lapse if you're short on money. Uh, sometimes you can switch payments to quarterly or annually. And kind of there's a lot of different ways to kind of make that up sometimes. So you don't want to just let the policy lapse. Life insurance is typically put in place for a few reasons, but one of the most common ones, right, is if I pass away, my family my wife or my kids, if I'm younger, uh, has some income or has some money to use as income if I pass away, as well as they have it for you know extra stuff that's going to come up along the way. But there's also a lot of times in retirement planning where life insurance is huge because if you're letting that policy lapse, a lot of the times what we use those policies for in retirement is, let's say that if um, you know the, the husband passes away, maybe he had a single pension or maybe he's going to lose his social security was higher. So the wife's going to lose hers, right? We're still going to lose some income in retirement most of the time. So with life insurance is a great way to supplement that to help kind of replace some income. So you don't want to let those policies lapse, especially if you've been paying on it for 20 dang years, you want to try to get, <laughs> try to get, try to get your payments out in some form, right? Whether you get them or your beneficiary. So you don't want to let that policy lapse. It's crazy. Cause like, like I was saying, Ron, you could be 20 years of paying on time, and the, and the moment you don't pay on time, it could, could lapse, right? So you want to make sure it's, it's paid in full. Yeah. Uh, another situation is maybe you have a great life insurance policy, but you don't tell anybody. You don't tell anybody in the family. You don't tell your loved ones about it. And if you don't let somebody know about your life insurance policy, that could lead to all kinds of problems. Yeah, that's a that's a whole whole other conversation. You're right on that. I mean, I think 
what's funny is I tell a lot of people is, you know, people have a trust or a will or something of that sort, but a lot of times they don't talk about it with that person. I always say when you're asking someone to be your executor or they're your beneficiary of things, a lot of times it's never a bad idea to tell one or two of them, hey, you know, if something happens to me, uh, you can call X, Y, and Z company, whether it's our office or the insurance company or whoever you're using the advisor, whoever it is. But you just want to make sure that a lot of times you want to let them know. I have a crazy story where, unfortunately, two parents passed away of uh, clients of ours. They were parents and they passed away. And their kids are, I want to say their kids are late 40s, early 50s. And uh, they came in and they were kind of digging through some stuff. And what we ask all of our clients, all any new client that's coming on board, like I said, that discovery, I mean, we get pretty in depth. So we'll ask every single asset you got out there, long-term care, life insurance, bank accounts, 401ks, everything. We want to know where everything's at and put together your asset map of what your retirement's going to look like. So long story short, I had their life insurance in there, right? Wrote down it was with XYZ company and here's the amount. Well, when the kids called and said, hey, mom and dad have passed away and they had told us to give you a call if something happens. And I said, absolutely, very sorry for your loss, you know. And so anyway, they come in and we're going over the accounts. And I had written down in our notes, I said, hey, uh, have you guys contacted the life insurance company yet? If not, we could help you with that. And they said, life insurance? I did. Mom and dad didn't have any. We didn't find anything. Well, I had written down, right, where the company was, what type of insurance it was. And so anyway, it was, you know, I think it was like a $500,000 policy that was still in place. And so it made a huge difference for that, for those families, right? But if I wouldn't have noted that, they might not have even known about the policy Mm till way later. It might have, you know, might have been swept under the rug. So you definitely want to have that conversation with those beneficiaries and let them know, hey, you know, if something happens, here's where some stuff's at where you can contact. And you don't want to be worth more dead than alive, right? You don't want to you don't want to dangle too much out there to them, but you want to let them know, hey, this is if something happens, here's what you need to do, or here's who you can contact. And in the situation that you just described, the insurance company might not be in a real big hurry to get in touch with you, so they can pay out yes. the policy. Yes, great, sure. great point. Yeah, when have, when have you ever owed someone money and been really excited to have to pay it out? Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, also, uh, not naming a contingent beneficiary is a trap that a lot of people fall into, and that leads to some real problems. It really does. You, you know, there's obviously most important is getting a primary beneficiary on there. And then the second most important thing is getting a contingent beneficiary. I always tell people you can change those whenever you want, but you want to, I guarantee you, you want, you'll probably would like who you picked better than if nobody picks, right? Uh, you have probate, you have a lot of different things that can kind of come up if property or assets aren't claimed. So it's so, so important to put somebody on there. I always tell people it's a charity. It could be a person, it could be a church, it could be whatever you want it to be. Just pick somebody, right? Uh, maybe it's in, I have a lot of clients right now that are in their older ages, they're 70 or 70 year olds plus, and a lot of them typically don't have, uh, some of them aren't having, they don't have any kids. Mm-hmm. And so I tell them, you know, they're like, well, I might leave it to the trust or I might leave it to the niece or the nephew or whatever the case is. Pick somebody, right? Pick somebody. Let's put it on there that you trust and you you want the money to go to right now. And if we have to change it, you can. But you always want to make sure you have the primary. For those of you that don't know, if something happens to you, that's who the primary beneficiary is. That's where the money would go to first. And then you could have you could have one or two primaries or three primaries, and then you could have a contingent. So if something happened to you and the and the primary beneficiaries that money would be paid out to the contingent beneficiary. So you just want to make sure you have that stuff. We always check that on all of our reviews with our clients because just having, you know, let's be honest, the world's a crazy place. We never know what's going to happen. So you want to make sure you have that stuff up to date. So those of you who are driving in the car or listening to the radio right now, go home, check your beneficiaries. Yeah, uh, we're talking about life insurance on uh, today's edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And Logan, if you're having a conversation with somebody about life insurance and they say, hey, be careful of your hobbies and extracurricular activities, what do they mean? Yeah, typically, like you said, if you're typically on some life insurance, depending on the case size and what type of insurance it is and stuff, they can actually re-rate you based off of, you know, if you do dangerous activities like skydiving or base jumping, you know, uh, and so you want to be kind of careful of that and making sure that, again, typically it's only for really high amount of policies, but it is something that does come up from time to time on certain policies to make sure you want to be disclosing that because if not, if something did happen to you and you weren't disclosing that you did those types of activities frequently, 
then it would, you know, they could come back and, and uh, cause a claim on, on your claim. So you just kind of want to be careful of that. Like I always say, when you're, when you're working with life insurance, make sure you're working with someone that understands the ins and outs of it. And uh, like we always say, we're full financial services here. So when we're talking about retirement planning, a lot of the times we look at uh, also, yes, stocks, bonds, annuities, all that stuff could be important. But there's also a lot of different life insurance or long-term cares that might need to be a piece of it. So we could add that in as part of as part of our planning here. But you want to make sure you're working with someone that understands the ins and outs of life insurance. If you do a lot of mountain climbing or scuba diving or, you know, deep sea <laughs> diving or, you know, whatever the case may be, if you're skydiving, I mean, my goodness, that makes a, a big difference if you're an yes. adventurous sort. Well, oh, yeah. Logan, a lot of people out there right now thinking about uh, making that phone call to your office for a discovery meeting. What happens when you get together with someone for the very first conversation? Yeah, so what happens is you call the number Ron always gives you here and basically uh, you leave a voicemail and you could tell us your name phone number and basically you know, someone from our office reaches out to you first thing Monday morning and how that works is we'll set up a time maybe it's via zoom or maybe it's a phone call or maybe it's at one of our offices and we typically block off about an hour where we'll sit down with you and your spouse and we'll get to really take a deep dive into what you're looking to do for again a lot of people that are approaching retirement or in retirement this could be a very valuable meeting for you where we're able to really shed some insight in on what goes into making a good retirement plan and we spend like i said about an hour getting to understand who you are what you're trying to accomplish what your biggest concerns are and making sure we're putting together a retirement plan it is custom fit to fit what it is you're trying to accomplish what your goals are and really taking into account that a lot of people that you might have met with over the years or maybe your current advisor um, isn't really looking at. We want to look at what is the tax impact? Is there any tax planning or any types of extra things we could be doing to benefit to benefit ourselves and our children later on down the road? Is there any types of different types of income planning or investment planning topics that we could be taking advantage of at this stage in life? What we always say is sometimes what got you to retirement won't get you through retirement. So if you're getting close to retirement or maybe you're just started to retire, uh, it's definitely time to make that phone call. And I always tell people I can't guarantee a lot in this business, right? Based off of markets and investments, but I typically can guarantee that you will leave that meeting with some value to your retirement plan for you and your family. So definitely, I think it's time to make that call. You may have a great deal of peace of mind after you talk with Logan. Number to call, 888-823-PLAN. You won't know until you make that phone call and have that discovery meeting uh, exactly where you are. 888-823 plan whatever your plan is for your retirement and whatever you're planning to do in your retirement whatever your lifestyle is going to be or you think it will be well then call this number and find out how you can fund all that because income is the key when it comes to retirement planning you need a plan put together that will generate income for you enough to guarantee that lifestyle 888-823 plan 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for Regary Financial, wherever you are in Southern California. One more time, that number, 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to Logan Sadler on The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz. We'll be back with more in just a moment. It's getting to know you time. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And uh, Logan, got a quick question here for you. This is part of our getting to know you effort. Uh, folks can discover things about you without even having the discovery meeting. They can discover things about you here on the radio show. What physical traits do you share with your relatives, in addition to being uh, incredibly handsome? Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, some of my relatives aren't that handsome, but um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, you know, I would say I, I'm that physical traits, that's tough. I would say it's funny, a lot of us, uh, this isn't necessarily a physical trait, I would say, but most of us are very, very, very active. Hmm? Uh, a lot of us stay moving very often, <laughs> don't sit well. I'm actually really tall, but most of my family is not. So we don't have a lot of the same physical traits, I would say. Yeah. But definitely, I would say staying active and, and very, very, uh, you know, does, does not sit well, I would say, is one of our traits that we have, as well as um, thin hair. That, that runs in the, men, in the men line, I would say. Thinning, <laughs> thinning hair as we get older, which is not, a, not an ideal trait. Yeah, you got that in common with a lot of people, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Logan, thanks a lot for sharing that about you, and uh, we'll have more coming up in just a moment. 
Are you concerned about living too long? Do you worry about the cost of health care in the future? These are a few of the signs that permanent life insurance could be for you. Logan Sadler of Regary Financial will help you recognize the rest of the signs. Text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to download this free guide to understanding permanent life insurance. Text ADVICE to 21000. Permanent life insurance isn't for everyone, but it could make a dramatic difference in your financial life. Text ADVICE to 21000 to find out if that's the case. What is your name? I am Arthur, King of the Britons. What is your quest? To get retirement ready. What is the P.E. ratio on your portfolio's top grossing products? I don't know that. Don't get blown to bits by complex jargon. Let Logan help you over the bridge to a meaningful retirement. We're back now with more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. As they say, the beat goes on. Logan Sadler is on the radio every week. Of course, there are podcasts available wherever you download your podcasts. And he has his own YouTube channel, too. Uh, Think about uh, joining Logan in that way. We appreciate your being with us on the radio show today. The number to call if you'd like to call, leave a voicemail with your name and phone number. You can get a discovery meeting quite easily. Call 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. And remember, at Regary Financial, uh, of which uh, Logan is the vice president and chief investment officer, they have terrific partnerships with uh, CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists, everybody involved with the financial part of your life to offer well-rounded guidance uh, for their clients. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Hey, Logan, uh, going to the mailbag today, we have great questions as always. Billy is in Palm Springs And Billy says, I've reached the age where I have to start taking RMDs from my retirement accounts. I have three different IRAs plus an old 401k from the job I retired from a few years ago. It's very confusing to try and figure out how much I need to take out of each account. How do they expect confused old fogies like me to figure this out every year (laughs) as we keep getting older and more confused? Yeah, great, great question, Billy. What, what I always say is, before I jump in to answer the question directly, I, I think this is definitely where I always tell people, most of the time, if you haven't had an advisor uh, doing, you know, when you're working and stuff, a lot of the times you'll be okay and things will work out. I always say, though, when it comes time for retirement planning, things tend to get a little bit more complicated as we get older. I always use that saying, you know, when you're going up the mountain, typically things go smooth. Most of the time, people get in trouble or get hurt coming down the mountain, right? Which coming down the mountain, I always refer to, is retirement planning, because now we're taking income. We have RMDs. We have all this stuff coming up. So definitely, I'd recommend, Billy, to reach out to somebody. Hopefully it's us, but you can definitely reach out to somebody that is a qualified advisor in the retirement planning space to, to go through this because it can be tricky uh, for sure. Again, it, it sounds very simple overall, but there can be some steps to it that could be very crucial. But that's just my disclaimer there, Billy. But basically, when it comes time for your question directly, what I always say is typically the custodians you work with, let's say the, let's say it's at ones at Schwab, ones at Fidelity, ones at Vanguard, okay, just picking some of the big companies, a lot of the times they'll have your uh, calculation calculation of what your RMD should be, some of those companies will calculate that for you. And that basically means you have to take a percentage out of each of those accounts. So if you you could take it all out of one account if you wanted to, but you'd have to add up the whole total of all three of those accounts, if that makes sense. So if they all add up to a total of a million dollars, you'd have to take out the RMD of that million dollars. You could take it a little bit out from each account or all from the one account if you wanted to, but you just want to make sure that they're you know, they're done correctly to satisfy that RMD for that year. But you're not alone there, Billy. Definitely. The RMD stage can be very confusing and it can be very costly because there's, you know, obviously taxes involved. And if not done correctly, there can be penalties done on the amount if you didn't take out the proper amount. So I would definitely recommend you maybe call somebody because it definitely, (laughs) it can get confusing at that spot. But I hopefully I kind of answer what what the RMDs kind of look like. And uh, there is some possible revisions coming down the road. So keep keep your... uh, um, ears tuned to the show. We'll cover those if they come down the road. Billy, thanks for the question. Go ahead and follow this up with a phone call, 888-823-PLAN uh, to Regary, and uh, then you can arrange to have that discovery meeting with Logan to talk about all this. Next question is from Tammy in Orange County. Tammy says, 
Logan, I have about $110,000 in my savings account, and somebody told me that's too much to have in cash. But I like the idea of knowing that I have it there in the event of an emergency or some kind of medical issue. Is it really too much? Yeah, great question, Tammy. It's funny. I actually met with a radio listener who called in a few weeks ago and then actually ended up coming on board with us because of a similar situation he had. And and let me fill you in. So to your situation, sometimes when I talk about cash in the bank, sometimes we call it lazy money, right? Too much money, maybe not doing anything. I always say, unless you have a specific purpose for that money, maybe you're buying a house with it next year or in, in a few months or whatever the case is, or or using that for some type of other big purchase coming up very short term. What I have found is most of the time, that's not the case, right? Most of the time, these people have had the money in there for a long period of time, and they continue to add to it quite frequently. Like the guy I was talking about the other day, he's continuously saving big amounts of money per month. So that 100 plus thousand he had was just going to continue to go up. And what I always tell people is the emergency fund is the amount that you should keep in cash. I'm a big fan of that. And that means that however much you need for six months plus of expenses. So I always say, you know, if you are spending, you know, anywhere between, let's say your expenses are $10,000 per month, you're going to need $60,000 or so of expenses in savings, right? So that means you keep $60,000 of money that you're not going to touch. You don't invest it. You don't do anything with it. It just stays there in case something were to happen. You have some access for emergencies, medical expenses, whatever would come up to, to kind of, you know, fit what you were saying exactly. But now anything excess over that, I always tell people with inflation, as well as just the time of investments, you're typically missing out on a pretty big boat there as far as what you could be doing with that money to kind of work for you. Now, some people I meet with, they need a lot more in cash than some. You know, I have some clients that keep a couple hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars in cash because they have that type of lifestyle or they have that type of, you know, overhead expenses with rentals or whatever the case may be. But if it's a pretty simple case, you look at, there's a whole different array of investments to look at, especially with safe money. There's things like CDs or money markets or different types of treasuries, as well as the market. A lot of these things are pretty good opportunities to get in and look at different ways to try to earn some money. I always tell people, you know, a quarter is better than a penny, right? So you want to make sure you're looking at what's out there for you. And uh, be, I'd be happy to kind of further cover this more to your situation if you came in, because I can ask you a little bit more. But that is my general rule of thumb is you typically want to look at six months of all bills and expenses. Anything over that, you probably should be investing that for down the road to, to kind of get your money to work for you. Um, yeah. facet. Good question from Tammy and a good answer, Logan. Uh, Tammy, again, follow it up with a phone call, as I always say, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, last question of the day is from Eric in Arrowhead. And Eric says, what aspects of my retirement plan am I most likely to screw up if I try to do things without a financial advisor? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Eric. I, I get asked this all the time, you know, what is the value a financial advisor brings to the table or what should they bring to the table? And, and kind of similar to your question there, Eric, I, I, my opinion is it's really the overseeing and the coordination of the planning. And yes, I always tell people with investments, do we invest in the stock market or annuities or this or that? Absolutely. We have access to all of that. But I think the most important part is the planning. And in your area, what you were asking, I'd say the two most common. So we talk about this all the time on the show, the five pillars of retirement planning, right? So that comes, covers income planning, investment planning, tax planning, and long-term care planning, as well as legacy planning. Now, of those five pillars, I'll be honest, almost everybody that comes in, whether they're with an advisor or on their own, and they're interviewing our firm to see if we're a good fit, a lot of the times they are missing two of the most important parts. One of them is tax planning, and the other one is income planning. Those are the two where some people say, well, yeah, my advisor's done really good, or I've done really good. My portfolio has grown over these years. But then it comes time where if we need to turn this around, instead of adding money to these places, when it comes time to take money out, a lot of us don't understand what the tax impact will look like, as well as how are we going to structure income to be consistent. A lot of the times that's where I see people, those two areas, I would say, Eric, are tax planning and income planning are typically the two that get left off that list that might be two of the most important, right? And then, of course, there's also like the uh, long-term care facet. We see a lot of people sometimes leave that one off, which that could be crucial. So, you know, to answer your question more directly, I think the value that an advisor should be bringing, not that you can't do it yourself, but there's a lot of products and services that most people don't have access to unless you work with an advisor. You look at structured notes, which can be a great income-producing vehicle. Uh, you have have to have an advisor to use those. 
a lot of the private equity REITs that you might use for different incomes and different types of uh, you know alternative investing, you have to have an advisor to go through, as well as uh, annuities, any types of income annuities or growth annuities or you know any types of fixed annuities, anything like that, you have to have an advisor. So I definitely think you miss some of those uh, some of those access to some of those tools. But I think the most important part, what a good financial advisor should be doing, especially if you're gearing up for retirement in the next few years or maybe just starting is looking at the whole picture and making sure we're plugging in that comprehensive income plan to make sure we looked at what would happen if the market stayed good, if it went bad, if it went sideways, as well as what types of guaranteed income streams do we have and, and how would that look for our next 20 or 30 year run into retirement. So that, that would be my long answer to your question, but that was a really good question, Eric. A lot of great questions today, in fact. And if you have some questions you'd like to ask Logan Sadler, you can do that in a discovery meeting. And you can achieve that by calling 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, leave a voicemail, a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back first part of the week. And then you can arrange a time to have the conversation with Logan Sadler, same guy you hear on the radio show here, and same guy you hear on the podcast, and you see on the YouTube channel, 888-823-PLAN. Ron Stutz here. Logan, since this is uh, the last segment of our show, you got any final words you'd like to leave to our listeners out there? Well, I appreciate you guys sticking with us. I mean, if you're listening to this part, you've probably been with us most of the show or maybe close to the whole show. So hopefully you found some good education and some value in there. And again, those of you out there that are gearing up and getting ready for retirement, definitely uh, I think it's time to give us a call and see if there's any value we could bring to the table. If not, uh, those of you that just keep listening to the show, we appreciate it. Hopefully you find it valuable. And me and Ron are trying to make it better each week we come back. So uh, guess what? We're going to be back here again next week with another show. Join us again next time. And in the meantime, call this number, 888-823-PLAN, Logan Sadler at Regary Financial. You've been listening to The Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.